The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. God will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. God does not deal with us as our wrongdoings deserve. God does not define us by our mistakes. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our wrongdoings from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. and welcome to Worship from Broadway Baptist Church, Derby. My name's Rochelle and I'm the minister here. If this is your first time with us, you are very welcome. Right at the start, I have to give a notice for church members. Uh, a reminder, we have a special church meeting and AGM on Wednesday, the 21st of July, beginning at 7.30 p.m. in person and on Zoom. You should have received information about these. If not, or if you would like paper copies sent to you, please contact the church office. Well, if you are into sport, this weekend is a special one for you. But even the Wimbledon finals have taken a back seat to the anticipation that is building up for this football match this evening. That is, if you're watching this on the day that it goes out. In the streets, prayers are going up. Flags are going up. Notices are going up in corner shops and garages. They are going home this evening to be able to watch this historic game tonight. The streets are going to be quiet as people are glued to their TV screens, willing England on, urging Southgate to make wise decisions. It's a national priority. We might even get a day's holiday. An historic moment to lift us up and 90 minutes or so out of the doldrums. A light on the horizon. Hope and national pride bring people together. Well, as we come to worship the living God who loves us deeply, do we have that sense of anticipation of how we might meet with him? How we might encounter him? The difference this hour may make to us because he broke into history by means of his son to demonstrate that despite being part of another empire, all was not lost. Hope had dawned. The psalmist was led to opening the psalm that we heard earlier with praise my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. And as he recounted the benefits and blessings that were worthy of praise, so he recognised God's tender love and compassion for his creation. Years later, a hymn writer picked up these words for our opening hymn today. Praise my soul, the King of heaven.
So let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the bright morning sun that brings refreshment after rain. You are the river of life, the one from whom all blessings flow. You are the gardener, knowing our frailty and weakness, knowing our needs, who carefully tends us. You are also the coach who cheers us on, who trains us in your ways, who builds us up to take our place on your team, who champions us, who encourages us, who shouts our name when we get it right and rushes out when we are weak. Thank you, Lord, for your constancy. Thank you, Lord, that your love for us is not dependent on our performance. It is not dependent on us having the winning formula. Thank you that you are compassionate, patient, kind and all-loving. As we read your word today, may it live for us. As we pray, your kingdom come. Open our eyes to see your life seeping through all around us. As we worship you, give us your heart for ourselves and your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in prayer with the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. In Christ alone.
for the last few weeks, we have been looking at our church values that we adopted a few years ago, that we hoped would help give us shape to our community life. Carefully, we settled on six values, two that lifted our attention Godward and two that made us mindful of our attitudes with one another. By way of recap, we put them this way. As followers of Jesus, diverse yet united and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we seek to encounter God the Father in gathered worship and daily living, to be expectant that God is at work and invites us to join in, to be hospitable through generosity, encouragement and mutual support, to serve together through the giving and sharing of ourselves and our resources. So up and in, two corners of the triangle if you like, we sum them up as prayer and care. But today we move to the last corner of the triangle as we turn our intention outward to share. Our fifth value, though, is interesting. It is a value that could almost sit anywhere among the three sections because it is a reflection of God's heart for us that we reflected on at the beginning of our worship from Psalm 103. And this value is to demonstrate compassion as we work for kingdom values, especially justice, locally and globally. Compassion is reflected in the life of Jesus. In Mark 6.34, having heard of the gruesome death of his cousin, John the Baptist, he takes his disciples away for a rest across the lake, only to discover that crowds had arrived ahead of him. And as Jesus looked at them, we read, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. To have compassion literally means to suffer with. And Jesus was filled with a deep love and pity for the crowds who were desperate to follow him. They too had closed up shop. They'd left their fields in order to spend time in the hot sun to hear his words, to see him in action. This was no tennis match or a football game. This was life and death. And these people were desperate. Jesus came to demonstrate the Father's heart for his people. And he laid down his life in love and gave them hope. But then he passed on the baton to his followers. Go and do likewise. This wasn't just the call to do what he did. But it was the call to experience the depth of emotion that he had gone through. The compassion that would motivate people to endure extraordinary circumstances to make Jesus known in the coming years. And we have seen this begin to work out in the early chapters of Acts. And when persecution broke out, forcing many to flee Jerusalem, they took the message of the good news of Jesus and continued to speak of it wherever they went. New churches sprang up who replicated the message and demonstrated the life. Persecution continued, people suffered, They were tempted to give up in the face of cruelty. But the Apostle Peter took it on himself to write two letters to small congregations that were scattered across a wide area, remote from one another, in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, to encourage them to stay firm in the faith, to guard their hearts and minds against the effects of bitterness and discouragement. And above all, he urged them to hold on to Christ-like attitudes in the face of suffering. Fran is going to read a passage from Peter's first letter that highlights the attitudes people were to have in the face of such difficulty. It comes from chapter 3, verses 8 to 18. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. 
they must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for evil. For Christ also suffered, once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Thank you, Fran. The early church was living with this hostility. And when faced with hostility, our natural instinct as human beings is to go into protective mode, to fight back, to guard our own resources. It's literally what we are wired to do. And we've all experienced it, even on a small scale, whether it is our reputation, our time, our resources on the line. We don't like to feel put down and we will defend ourselves. And Peter especially knew all about this and this kind of reaction. After all, he was the one who was so protected of Jesus, he cut off the ear of the servant at the night of Jesus' arrest. Yes, Peter could be hot-tempered all right, And who of us doesn't feel like this from time to time? But Peter had learned the valuable lesson of the link between suffering and compassion. And even though the hostility that he and the early church were facing was on a far bigger scale from us, where life was literally under threat, his attention was turned away from self-interest to God's purposes. He had learnt the connection between Christ's suffering and how it brought him, and therefore the church, to God. And Peter finally adopted it into his own life. Not to repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but to repay evil with blessing. This must have been a huge lesson for Peter. Then, having learnt it for himself, he then charged the church to act totally counterculturally in their suffering by being a blessing in return for hostility in order that they might receive blessing, but also that their actions may lead to an opportunity to share the reason for their hope that they have with gentleness and respect. But why would they want to do this unless they had compassion on the ones who were being hostile? A deep love and pity that saw beyond the current circumstances. These Christians, in their scattered small congregations, grasped that whatever it looked like on the ground, they were part of a bigger purpose. Peter addresses them as exiles at the beginning of the letter. Their earthly life was not home. They were simply passing through on the way to greater glory, and that gave them hope. When we have a bigger picture and a deeper understanding on a situation, it can give us a depth of peace, an ability to let go of aspects of situations that otherwise might cause great anxiety. But specifically for compassion, they were imitating Christ who came to earth to suffer with humanity in every way and to speak up in situations of injustice, to even get angry when people were marginalised and prevented from encountering God for themselves. Well, why then is compassion specifically one of our values? It is this attitude of the heart that motivates us to want to make a difference in the face of suffering. That at times like Jesus, who could be deeply fatigued, and sometimes we will feel overwhelmed by the need, facing opposition, we will continue to do our part. But such a deep work of the heart starts with encountering compassion for ourselves. 
God's compassion on us as we started the service with, recognising that while we deserve rejection, he offers us grace and forgiveness. And that compassion develops as we demonstrate it to one another, recognising that just as we need grace, so we offer it to others too. Compassion is part of our caring. And only then can we demonstrate compassion with the wider world. Whether that be speaking up for refugees, the homeless, the environment, local issues, whatever it may be. But compassion is grown in the soil of suffering. We suffer with when we have sympathy and empathy. That can be a challenge to a church like ours. There is research that shows that a lack of suffering can lead to a lack of care for others. Or to put it another way, the more we have, the more our instinctual need to guard what we have kicks in. I'll try to remember to include the link below the video. It is a fascinating and challenging read. But we are called by God to a different way of living. The late Henry Nguyen wrote a lot about compassion in terms of suffering with. And he wrote this, Compassion asks us to go where it hurts to enter into the places of pain, to share in brokenness, fear, confusion and anguish. Compassion challenges us to cry out with those in misery, to mourn with those who are lonely, to weep with those in tears. Compassion requires us to be weak with the weak, vulnerable with the vulnerable and powerless with the powerless. Compassion means full immersion in the condition of being human. In other words, it is not enough simply to feel compassion. Compassion requires an active response, which is why our value is written, demonstrate compassion. We need to do something with it. Compassion requires us to lay aside our pride and independent spirit to allow our hearts to be deeply moved by love. So this fifth value then captures action to demonstrate compassion as we work for kingdom values, especially justice, locally and globally. So we ask, who needs our compassion today? Who will need our compassion this week? It may be the person that we have recently judged, walked past, disregarded, who we thought was beyond deserving. It may be the person or cause we have assumed we are too busy or too tired to do anything about. Well, that puts us on the same level as the Pharisees who Jesus railed at because they wouldn't enter the homes of the unclean, the sinners. They had too much self-respect. It was more than their status in society would allow. And of course, the parable of the Good Samaritan speaks into this very well. But another factor that stops us is simply fear. Fear of the cost. Fear of the situations it may lead us into. Fear of what it might mean, how it might drain us. Mother Teresa, who knew so well what it meant to demonstrate compassion, discovered this. I have found the paradox that if you love until it hurts, there can be no more hurt, only more love. Well, this last year has broken down many barriers in this area. As needs have come to the fore, there has been a willingness in society to pull together, to befriend the isolated, to feed the hungry, to house the homeless. But it won't take long for old hostilities to resume. There are a number among us who are involved daily in demonstrating compassion in the work. But do others of us need to go against what might be our natural instinct to guard our resources, time and even self-respect to be like Christ and suffer with those who are hurting and broken? As a church, We do a lot at a distance, raising money and awareness like we did last week for Nagpur in India, supporting the food bank, 
talking about issues as a start. And some of this, to be honest, is to do with our geographic distance as much as our demographic distance. And there is also the fact that so many needs locally are often hidden, as as has been confirmed with conversations with other local leaders. But I wonder, if we were truly to offer our time and our talents in a spirit of openness, what might happen? As a time of response, I shall put up the Nguyen quote again and give time for, to reread it and reflect. And it may be that as you read it, you are the recipient who has not received compassion when it was needed and it has left an indelible mark. Perhaps today may give you the courage to speak up as a step towards freedom, knowing that compassion is God's heart. Well, however much we do in the area of compassion, we all fall short in demonstrating it at times. So I invite you to join me in a confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not always been compassionate when we needed to be. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Our next song draws together the need for compassion in our world. As we sing or listen, may it be our prayer this morning, perhaps in your heart, it will bring to mind special places and situations and make it your intercession today. Said your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives, cures for their ills, work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills, land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak. Says to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark. Refuge from cruel wars, havens from fear, cities for 
sanctuary, freedoms to share. Peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green. Christ for the bitterness, his cross for the pain. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Rest for the ravished earth, oceans and streams, plundered and poisoned. A future and dreams Lord and a madness Carelessness greed Make us content with The things that we need God of the poor Friend of the weak Give us compassion As we go our separate ways, let us take into our week that attitude of compassion. Depending on what happens later, you might need it. Well, our blessing is based on Paul's words from Colossians 3.12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, remember you are holy and dearly loved. Dress accordingly in compassion kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, so that others too may experience that love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. However you are spending the rest of today, may it be blessed. And ahead of the government's announcement tomorrow, our song as we play out reminds us of where we have come from, the difference vaccinations have made to our lives, and even though there is still lots to contend with, look to him as you hold on. When the year 
has been unkind And the hearts of the people are broken When the winter is long and wild And life like the earth becomes frozen darkest night there's a light that shines there's a hope that's burning in the shadows like a seam of gold in a shattered world there is one who holds it all together if you play by anxiety If you fear for the future's unspoken If you've nurtured your dreams from seed But the harvest has failed or been stolen In the darkest Shattered world, you're the one.